Hey everyone, welcome back to Remember This Tech. Behind me, I scored this HP Low Profile 6300 desktop unit. Just by looking at the front, it's not much to be said about it. You know, it looks standard, right? DVD multi rider drive, four USBs in the front, headphone jack, and also a microphone jack. If you flip it around, got four USB, well it could be 3.0, and two more. You got an Ethernet, output for video, VGA, two PS2, more audio out for your speakers. This is a display port, and there's no HDMI out. These are just a couple of the downfalls of this small form factor case from HP and Compact and Dell. The power supplies are usually limited in their wattage, so if you're going to do upgrades, well, you're going to have to look for a low power, low profile video card if you want to do anything on this system other than an internal graphics uh, for the CPU. Typically, you're not going to have PCI 6 pin output for those power supplies. <laughs> They have a fairly easy system here. This clipped right to the side and you can secure it with a screw. Let me zoom in the camera so you can get a better look at this. Now, this is the internals of this unit, just the way I got it. I got this one for free. These drive bays can be removed. From what I can tell, this could house a uh, second gen or third gen uh, CPU like maybe an i5 if we're lucky or an i7-3770 if we're really lucky. First glance we can also see there's a four pin power connector to the motherboard here. And taking a closer look in the system, the shroud here comes off and channels the air from the fan in the front of the PC through this passive heatsink there. You can see over here you've got your removable CD DVD ROM drive flips right up like so and then you can access the internals and then there's a small drive bay where you can add another drive to your system somebody had put in a SK Hynix solid state drive I don't know what capacity it is I bet you we can get it out of here it is not held on by anything so Ooh, check it out one terabyte if it works at least this will be worth it at least it wasn't even secured in here by any means right here well yeah and it's got an adapter the reason why it's got an adapter here is because this here is routed and they didn't take into account that you can remove this but yeah Right here you got the power supply and this power supply is only, it's a 240 watt max. So you're gonna be so limited on uh, what you can put in here and what you can't, especially for low profile cards, video cards. So we got four RAM slots populated here. Let's take a look at the, one of them at least. Four gig DDR3 PCA500. 1066 megahertz would have liked to see 1600 megahertz but if these are all 4 gig then that's uh, 16 gig of RAM that's pretty good I don't know if this motherboard can even support faster RAM but um, it's just what it is so we have one two three four SATA and we have the proprietary plugs for power for this power supply so if you if you want to get your hopes up and you think you can just put in a normal power supply or a low profile these are all like proprietary like for HP so there's a secondary four pin over here for extra power I guess uh, there's a PCI Express graphics slot here and it says 16x and I don't know if it's two or three Gen 2 or 3. There looks like there is some promise to this machine. And the only thing we got to do now is to boot it up and see what processor it has and if anything works. If it was given away, why'd they leave it one terabyte SSD in there? Did it even work? Who knows? Fingers crossed. Let's power it up and see what happens. Alright, moment of truth. Let's see if we can get anything to happen here on this 
could have a bad power supply, could have anything wrong. Powered on, got beeping problems. And what could that mean? Well, fan is working. I think we're gonna have to pull one thing at a time out and troubleshoot it. Since we're getting no video out and we're getting beep codes and I'm too lazy to look them up, I'm gonna slap in a PCI Express crappy video card, see if we can get video out. Let's uh, try out the video card out and see. Probably still get the same postcodes. Yep, same beep codes. We're gonna pull all the RAM, except for one stick next. That's probably got something to do with it. Left only one stick of RAM in, powered on. We are not getting the beep codes anymore. The system shut off though. Okay, she's back on, so it's seemed to be a possible RAM issue. Maybe. Oh, we got video out. So we got video out. So it's one of the sticks of RAM is bad. So that's a positive. We need to do tech checks and stuff. So so we don't want to be in here. We want to go in the BIOS. Uh, I suppose it's going to boot up if it has an OS on here. So I'll have to catch it back here again. So it's got Windows 10. Bad stick of RAM. Really? That's it? Power supply is good? Maybe. We're going to have to go further on this and uh, actually and test the RAM sticks one at a time and find out which one is bad. The, and then test the onboard video out. So it's probably just as simple as that. It means a couple things here. It means that the SSD in this unit, the one terabyte is possibly good because we're booting an operating system. Um, one of the sticks of RAM works and CPU has to work because <laughs> We're loading an operating system. Let's uh, reboot if we can't get in here and uh, go from there and check the RAM sticks. All right, put in the second stick of RAM. Possibly worked. Plugged in an optical drive and we got one solid beep. No video out, so I'm gonna put back in the uh, cheap, low profile PCI Express video card and reboot and see from there, so. All right, it's kind of boring just watching the blank screen. But the fourth stick of RAM is in, and uh, it works. Okay, we know we know you don't like that uh, memory reconfig on the fly, uh, but it's I got in the BIOS, so let's check the BIOS out. So I don't know. I'm using the uh, secondary low-profile graphics card. Um, system information. Oh, a little disappointing here, but there's hope because we can go with a third gen um, CPU upgrade if we want. But it's only an i5-2400 CPU in here. Positive side is we have DDR3, which is something. But although I have a 2500 that I could put in here for a mild upgrade, not sure if I have a third gen that I can put in here, but if I do, it'd be a hefty step up. And the... Uh, Time and date is holding, so CMOS is good. Uh, device configuration, terabyte SSD, and DVD-ROM, which is good. HCI is enabled, and our boot order is here. So this doesn't have any security modules, you know, so you're not gonna be able to, this generation, you're not gonna be able to load Windows 11 unless you do a bypass, and that's even going to be disallowed after a while, so. All right, so. So what are we going to do now that we know that this system works, basically, except for the onboard video? We're going to upgrade the CPU. We've got enough RAM, and I think we're going to throw on a Linux distro on here. Throw on a higher power, more capable, low-end video card, and see if we can get a pretty snappy Linux system running, right? What distro am I gonna use? You're gonna have to wait and find out.